May I ask everyone who is able to stand, to stand for our call to worship. He did not wait till the world was ready, till people and nations were at peace. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He did not wait till hearts were pure. To a world like ours of anguish, shame, he came, and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice or to share our grief to touch our pain, pain with love. Rejoice, rejoice. She was five, sure of the facts, and recited them with slow solemnity, convinced every word was revelation. And she said, they were so poor, they had only peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to eat, and they went a long way from home without getting lost. And the lady rode a donkey, the man walked, and the baby was inside the lady. They had to stay in a stable with an ox and an ass, but the rich men found them because a star litted the roof. Shepherds came, and you could pet the sheep, but not feed them. And then the baby was born. And do you know who he was? Her quarter eyes inflated to silver dollars. The baby was God. And she jumped in the air, whirled around, 
dove into the sofa and buried her head under the cushion, which is only the proper response to the good news of the incarnation. I don't think I'm going to have any problem asking the children to come forward tonight. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. I'm seeing plenty of motion out there. I know you're here. You ready to go? So, I have been eavesdropping, means I've been sneaking in to listen to your lessons in Sunday school and the quizzes. So tell me what the name of the angel was who came to Mary. Yeah, it began with a G. You got it, Gabriel. Now, come on. Everybody knew that in Sunday school yesterday, right? All right, how many miles was it from Nazareth to Bethlehem? Go, shout it out. A hundred. Yep, and they didn't even have MapQuest or Google Maps, <laughs> right? Good. Now, you guys named the other angel in the Christmas story. Tell everybody what you named that angel. Begins with it. Be, say it loud. Herald. I thought that was pretty cool. That was what we call extra biblical stuff. Tonight we get to light the fifth candle, and we're going to do it without setting the church on fire. And I've already asked Nicholas to come up and do it. So, who does the Christ candle honor? Jesus. And so tonight we celebrate the birth of Jesus and it's a wonderful gift. And I, you know what? I heard some of you have already opened gifts. Is that true? Uh-huh. And so one of the reasons we share gifts is why? Because God gave us, God gave us life, a great gift and a gift of Jesus. And what town did we say, do we say that Jesus was born in? Bethlehem, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the congregation to share in a reading. And Mark's going to lead us in the first part. And then I'm going to have Nicholas light the Christ candle. And I may be lifting you up to that one. All right, let's go. 
while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. Tonight, angels far and near sing tender lullabies, well-worn fabric full of years, holds in the warmth of parental love. Animals and shepherds crowd in tight, glowing with adoration, while a muffled cry squeezes out to greet the world. On this Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle for the child king, the infant redeemer, the lowly Lord. And now we know he is born and nothing will ever be the same. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Might need to get dad. <laughs> got a little higher? There we go. We got an assist. Uh-oh. <laughs> you, you got it? Uh, did, did it go? Yeah. All right. Now, as my coaching, one of my English coaching colleagues would say, we need a little ripple for that. <laughs> well done. All right. So just like Sunday morning, everybody ready to help me? Ready? On three. Okay, you good? One, two, three. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you for coming up tonight. And we're going to, there we go, we're going to sing together.
It always strikes me as ironic, yet also strangely fitting, that in the elegant line drawing of the nativity which graces the Christmas Eve bulletin cover each year at my church, as in so many such manger scenes, there is no figure of Joseph to be seen. Mary, of course, holds center stage, and the blessed infant lies right there in her arms. Several farm animals may be discerned in the shadows at the fringes. There is even a suggestion of kings and shepherds, but Joseph simply is not there. I say this is strangely fitting because as I have discovered in reading and research over the years, the role of Joseph, Joseph of Nazareth, Joseph the carpenter, Joseph the husband of Mary, Joseph who stood at the manger. The role of Joseph at the birth of the Messiah seems to be an almost transparent one, to be hardly there at all, to be that of a virtual non-entity. Oh yes, he did his bit beforehand in getting the pregnant mother to that soon to be illustrious cow shed. And later he will have his part to play again as he leads the refugee Mary and her newborn child in the flight to Egypt. But at the birth itself, those dramatic moving scenes of nativity, Joseph fades into the background and well nigh disappears. There must have been, don't you see, a kind of agony to being there a veritable torment to just standing there, able to do nothing, say nothing, that might help. To stand and wonder what all this could mean and fear at what might very well lie ahead for his beloved Mary and this child who is not even his. To have to stand there and simply be there, the hardest task, the most difficult role of all, that of just being there. And Joseph, dearest Joseph, stands for that. Don't you see? It is important, crucially important, that he stand there by that manger as he does in all his silent misery of doubt, concern, and fear. Because if Joseph were not there, there might be no place for us. For those of us, at least, so many who recognize and know that heartache also for our own, who share that helpless sense of lostness, of impotence in our own lives, our families, our jobs, in our fearful, threatened world this night. Yes, in Joseph's look of anguish, we find our place. We discover that we, too, belong beside the manger this manger in which are met God's peace and all our wars and fears. That stable, too, in Bethlehem must have been a busy place on Christmas Eve. What with birth and all its urgencies, the visiting, worshiping shepherds, and the people they had told, all crushing in to see. Yet Joseph simply stands there don't just do something, is what he calls to us across the centuries, into the midst of the hustle and the bustle of the season. Don't just do something, stand there. And so we come at last into the stable, a little breathless to be sure, a bit preoccup preoccupied perhaps, about those last few lingering items still to be checked off before we close our eyes. But we gather just the same to rest our tired feet, to sing beloved songs, to hearken to sweet sounds, to that give delight and harm not. Ancient words that speak to us of light and darkness, hope beyond all fears. Veniti adorimus, says the carol. Oh, come, let us adore him. Not let us serve him, you will notice, nor let us work for, strive for, live for, die for him. All that may come in its own good time, God's own good time, but for this night at least, holiest of nights, veniti adoremus, let us be there 
simply be there just as Joseph was, with nothing we can do now, nothing we can bring. It's far too late for that. Nothing even to be said except, behold, be blessed, be silent, be at peace. Joseph, Joseph, son of David, do not fear, the angel said. And Jim and Alice, Fred and Sue, Bob and Tom, and Jean and Betty too. The word to you, to all of us here at the manger's side, the word is also, do not fear. Our God, the Lord and Sovereign, maker of heaven and earth, time and eternity, of life and death and all that is and shall be, has joined us in this moment, shares our sorrow, knows our fears, is well acquainted with our foolishness and petty selfish ways, and still and all he has, and all he brings us is peace. He bears us hope, he tells us. Just stop trying for one moment. Just stop striving, stop all you're doing for this night of nights, and then believe and be, accept and live, and know that you are mine, and you are blessed now and forevermore. The hour is at hand, the time is fulfilled. Veniti Haderemus. If you miss him, then nothing else in all this wide creation now can take its place. Veniti Haderemus. The time is now, that time when we must be there, simply be there and adore. An angel came to me, and I was unprepared to be what God was using, mother I was to be. A moment I despaired, thought thought briefly of refusing. The angel knew I heard. According to God's word, I bowed to this strange choosing. 
A palace should have been the birthplace of a king. I had no way of knowing. We went to Bethlehem. It was so strange a thing. The wind was cold and blowing. My cloak was old and thin. They turned us from the inn. The town was overflowing. God's word, a child so small, who still must learn to speak, lay in humiliation. Joseph stood, strong and tall. The beasts were warm and meek and moved with hesitation. The child born in a stall. I understood it all. Kings came in adoration. Perhaps it was absurd, a, stab a stable set apart, the sleepy cattle lowing, and the incarnate word resting against my heart. My joy was overflowing. The shepherds came, adored the folly of the Lord, wiser than all men's knowing. O come, O come, Emmanuel, within this fragile vessel here to dwell. O child, conceived by heaven's power, give me thy strength, it is the hour. O come, thou wisdom from on high, like any babe at life you cry. For me, like any mother, birth was hard, O light of earth. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, whose birth came hastily at night. Born in a stable, in blood and pain, is this the king who comes to reign? O come, thou rod of Jesse's stem, the stars will be thy diadem. How can the infinite fi finite be? Why choose, child, to be born of me? O come, thou key of David, come. Open the door to my heart home. I cannot love thee as a king, so fragile and so small a thing. O come, thou day spring from on high. I saw the signs that marked the sky. I heard the beat of angels' wings. I saw the shepherds and the kings. O come, desire of nations, be simply a human child to me. Let me not weep that you were born. The night is gone. Now gleams the morn. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, God's son, God's self, with us to dwell. It was from Joseph first I learned of love. Like me, he was dismayed. How easily he could have turned me from his house. But unafraid, he put me not away from him. O oh, God sent angel, pray for him. Thus, through his love, was love obeyed. The child's first cry came like a bell. God's word aloud, God's word indeed. The angel spoke, so it befell. And Joseph with me in my need, O child whose father came from heaven, to you another gift was given, your earthly father chosen well. With Joseph, I was always warmed and cherished. Even in the stable, I knew that I would not be harmed. And though above the angels formed, man's love it was that made me able to bear God's love, wild, formidable, to bear God's will through me performed. <laughs>
chemistry lab at school was an old greenhouse surrounded by ancient live oaks garnished with Spanish moss. The experiment I remember best was pouring a quart of clear fluid into a glass jar and dropping into it grain by grain salt-sized crystals until they layered like white sand on the floor of the jar. One more grain, and suddenly water and crystal burst into a living, moving pattern, a silent, quietly violent explosion. The teacher told us that only when we had supersaturated the solution would come the per precipitation. The little town was like the glass jar in our lab. One by one they came, grain by grain, all those of the house of David, like grains of sand to be counted. The inn was full. When Joseph knocked, his wife was already in labor. There was no room even for compassion until the barn was offered. That was the precipitating factor. A child was born and the pattern changed forever, the cosmos shaken with the silent explosion.
stand for the reading of the gospel. Tonight we hear how Luke describes the birth of Jesus from Luke 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to their own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn child, whom she wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of God appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Sovereign. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom God is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which God has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it, wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The words of our gospel for Christmas. <laughs>
Who would think? Who would think that what was needed to transform and save the earth might not be a plan or army, proud in purpose, proved in worth? Who would think, despite derision, that a child should lead the way? God surprises earth with heaven coming here on Christmas Day. Shepherds watch and sages wonder. Monarchs scorn and angels sing. Such a place as none would reckon host a holy, helpless thing. Stabled beast and passing strangers watch a baby laid in hay. God surprises earth with heaven coming here on Christmas Day. Centuries of skill and science span the past from which we move, yet experience questions whether with such progress we improve. In our search for sense and meaning, lest our hopes and humor fray, God surprises earth with heaven coming here on Christmas Day.
Let us join together in a time of prayer. In gratitude, in praise, O God, may our hearts turn to receive the light of the luminous night. Guide us in the ways of laying our lives gratefully before you. We lift our voices to God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. You call us each by name. Teach us to serve all creatures of your sacred creation. Guide us toward unity, healing our division. We lift our voices to God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. The nations are yours, part of your wondrous body. May all leaders know they are called to care. May they heed your people's cries for release from senseless oppression. Guide us toward justice and peace, healing our deceit. We lift our voices to you, O God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. We are yours. Guide our hearts and minds and bodies in the ways of wisdom, that we might hear and heed the pleas of friends among us who hunger, thirst, and face the cold nights. Guide us toward mercy, healing our fear. We lift our voices to you, O God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. Strengthen all who suffer and those who care for them. Open our hearts to see your tender presence already within us. Guide us toward wholeness, healing our blindness. We lift our voices to you, O God. You welcome all who have completed their earthly journey. Your peace is now their peace. Guide us into your heart, healing our soul. We lift our voices to you, O God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. In gratitude and praise, we invite your peace into our lives. We lift our voices to you, O God. May the, May the wisdom of Christ light our path. God of hope and promise, through your love, the promise of life enfolds our hearts. In your heart, we offer our lives in hope. And so, as the star of night eternally sings your praises, we lay in your open hands the thankful prayers of ourselves, our souls, our bodies. Amen. Let us join in praying together as Jesus taught his first disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
God continues to bless the world with abundance. Let us share our gifts tonight out of that abundance in the hope that this church will be a blessing and a light to the world in the name of the Christ child. that he brings thank you thank you thank you jesus for the way you love and feed us for the many ways you lead us thank you thank you lord There's a quiet understanding when we're gathered in the Spirit. It's a promise that He gives us when we gather in His name. There's a love we feel in Jesus. There's a manner that He feeds us. It's a promise that He gives us when we gather in His name. Thank you, God of love, for the promise of this season. We are grateful for the generosity aroused in us by Christ's coming into the world. May these gifts represent a joyous sharing 
for the sake of your children everywhere. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to our time of communion together, we remember that in this church, all are welcome at God's table. Christ came at Christmas for each and every one of us. Would you join me in the liturgy for communion? Blessed is the luminous night, the advent of Christ, our light and our life. The light of Christ is born anew this night as your heart. In the beginning, light shines in the darkness, loving, beautiful, good, giving birth to all creation, the center, the heart of unfolding life. The light graces all creation as God's presence. The light is, the, light is the child of Mary and Joseph. The light is a Jewish mystic, sage, and prophet. The light, is the light is life in the midst of death. The light is good. May Christ the light reveal to all who would see the wisdom and wonder of God's boundless love. Amen. Our God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our gracious God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, source of life and without end, we give thanks to you. You continually call all life into being, cradling your creation in compassion. You spread out the heavens like a tent and enclose the seas. You fill the world with wondrous creatures and know all things as truly good. You send your heavenly messengers of hope day and night and with them we give glory to you. Holy, holy, holy God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. In the days of Simeon and Anna, you lean toward the earth. Your eternal spirit becomes known to us through your beloved. Born into the family of Mary and Joseph, Jesus is cradled beside the beasts and warmed by their breath. Here is your child, like all your children, woven into life by the Spirit and in need of compassion. Worldly rulers are troubled by your dawning reign, embodied in this child, in whom the fullness of your Spirit is pleased to dwell. Holy God, as you visit us in the birth of Jesus, Heal our blindness so that we may see your presence now, always within and among us. In these delightful creatures of bread and wine, holy food and holy drink, help us to taste the banquet of heaven here on earth. We remember how Jesus takes bread, blesses and breaks it and gives it to his friends, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this and for the remembrance of me. Likewise, the beloved holds the cup of wine, blesses it and gives it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood being poured out for you and for many that you may know God always holds you in tender forgiveness. Do this for the remembrance of me. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Christ. 
the gifts of God, all without exception, are invited to God's table.
Let us pray together. Holy God, may you shed your grace brighter than starlight on us, that our hearts may radiate your good tidings to all and renew the weary world in your name. Emmanuel, God with us. Holy God, to you we give honor and glory and joy, now and forever. Amen. And now God says to us what he has already said to the world as a whole through his grace-filled birth. I am there. I am with you. I am your life. I am the gloom of your daily routine. Why will you not bear it? I weep your tears. Pour out your tears on me, my child. I am your joy. Do not be afraid to be happy. For ever since I wept, joy is the standard of living that is really more suitable than the anxiety and grief of those who think they have no hope. I am the blind alleys of all your paths. For when you no longer know how to go any farther, then you have reached me, foolish child, though you are not aware of it. I am in your anxiety, for I have shared it by suffering it. This reality, incomprehensible wonder of my almighty love, I have sheltered safely in the cold stable of your world. I am there. I no longer go away from this world. Even if you do not see me now, I am there. It is Christmas. Light the candles. They have more right to exist than all the darkness. It is Christmas, Christmas that lasts forever.
when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the magi and elders are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make music in the heart. Let us go now in peace, and may the eternal love of God, the hope of the Christ child, and the peace and inspiration of the Holy Spirit go with us all this night. Amen.